In Quest Group, which is Quantum Engineering Science and Technology Group, we work on developing systems which are macroscopic in size, but they can still manifest quantum effects, which means that these systems are big enough that they can be controlled by us while manifesting delicate quantum effects. Besides uh, enabling new generation quantum processes and quantum technologies, these systems are great test beds of fundamental physics itself. So to enable such systems, we actually work with a broad range of theorists and experimentalists, not just within physics, but outside physics. I work in theoretical cosmology. Uh, my interest is uh, at the interface of gravity and quantum mechanics. Uh, I want to understand how they inform us of the origin of the universe uh, and of the evolution of the universe. So for example, we think that quantum mechanics had a very important role in the early universe and how structure in the universe formed. So that's one thing that really excites me. Another exciting question is what happens to quantum mechanics in strongly gravitating systems like black holes? And in those systems, we, we find that when we bring quantum mechanics and gravity together, we find interesting paradoxes, which I would want to understand. Similarly, we, we see today that the, the universe is actually, it's not just expanding, but it's even accelerating. We attribute this to something called dark energy. And there are suggestions that dark energy might be a manifestation of quantum corrections to general relativity. That's another thing that I want to understand. Ultimately, I think the, the, the final question is whether space-time itself can emerge from uh, quantum mechanics. One of the primary challenges we have tackled is interfacing quantum processes with classical computers. And this requires identifying the cleanest possible routes to steer quantum information without losing it. Because as soon as you lose quantum information, this process is called decoherence, and it basically uh, just loses the, all the quantum advantage we can get out of these signals. So in recent years, we have figured out how to do this most efficiently and in a way such that there's only a one-way flow of information between quantum computers and classical computers. One other challenge which we are thinking about is the idea of how to be decoherence. The idea of decoherence is loss of information, and typically it is a liability for all kind of quantum processors. In recent years, scientists have realized, however, that if we use decoherence in a clever way, instead of destroying quantumness, it can reinforce it. So we have really uh, done recent work which has shown that it is indeed possible um, to harness decoherence and introduce it in a controlled manner such that we can um, stabilize delicate quantum states like entangled states. And in fact, it has been experimentally demonstrated by our collaborators. Understanding how nature processes quantum information is a fundamental question. Uh, it has far-reaching consequences. And I think in order to understand uh, a question like this, we need techniques from a variety of disciplines. We certainly need an interdisciplinary approach, both within subfields of physics uh, and between physics uh, and uh, other fields of, of the sciences. We have very close collaborations and deep ties uh, with several industry partners, uh, such as IBM Research and Raytheon BBN Technologies. This is an immense benefit to us, both in terms of physics as well as student training, specifically by talking continuously to people who are developing practical quantum technologies like IBM and Raytheon. It keeps us grounded and it also helps us identify the primary directions where we can make a real world impact. Collaborative research in quantum engineering uh, is really important to develop uh, techniques that go against um, pre-existing paradigms. I think the union of uh, more fundamental research done in academia and at universities with more applied focus in industry can often find routes to solving problems and developing new ideas that uh, individually the two components could not. I think an important part of that is having, uh, from the industrial perspective, is having an, uh, a university collaborator who understands the priorities and, uh, uh, and the way research is done in industry. And that's why working with UMass Lowell has been really rewarding for me, as in Professor Kamal's group, I find a lot of individuals who are really uh, are motivated by questions that are interesting both to universities and academia as well as to industry. For us, uh, it's, uh, we, we love to collaborate with academics. It's always, it's always a source of new ideas uh, and a way to use the work that we do at Raytheon in, into new areas and explore new areas. It's a good way to train students and you know, expand the workforce, uh, which 
uh, then benefits us as well. Uh, and uh, it's an excuse to, to, to study new problems and interesting things. It's a great time to be in the field of quantum information because there are several research opportunities at all levels. We are constantly looking for new students and motivated postdocs to join our effort. And UMass Lowell as an institute and Kennedy College of Sciences has identified quantum as a strategic direction in which they plan to continue investing. We are also in talks of creating new educational opportunities and identifying specialized degree pathways which can train students in several aspects of quantum information, spanning physics, computer science and engineering. And so we hope that these will be the students of the next generation quantum smart workforce.